Hey there, superstars. It is Vanessa here again, your speaker, trainer, and coach from Live, Love, Give. And I'm coming to you um, with a message all around looking after yourself. And one that I just want to remind us all of and something that's been going on in my world um, in particular, as always, as you guys know. Um, But today's message is all around Don't be afraid of not being there for others when you need to be there for yourself. And um, a massive shout out to a lot of the women that I coach actually um, with this message. I know a lot of you men also struggle with this, um, but I'm, you know, I've just hear too many stories of us actually sacrificing the time, energy, and effort that we need to direct towards our own success, our own growth, our own potential um, when we're sacrificing it to be there for other people and I want to talk into this whole thing because, you know, and it's nothing new, you know, we've all heard the concept of, you know, make sure you put your, um, you know, your um, oxygen mask on first, the airplane analogy, before you start helping anybody else. Um, But at the end of the day, that's kind of the gist of what we're talking into. Um, But I just want it to be a reminder. And sometimes we're kind of oblivious. Um, If you're a bit like me in this in this way, which I'll explain but we can be kind of a little bit oblivious to the fact of what we're actually doing and how we're actually sacrificing ourselves. And, you know, if we are wired in in a particular way, and I'm going to talk into my wiring and let me know, shout me out, drop me a comment. Um, let me know if this resonates with you or somebody that you know in your life. So um, you guys who've been following me for a long time now and absolutely know my favorite framework for personal development and all things living your life and relationships and all that sort of stuff comes down to understanding your unique wiring, your brain wiring, looking at the neuro science of your personality um, and then using that to identify why you do what you do, understanding that, understanding, you know, why you're different to the next person, why your needs are different to the next person, why your values, your potential, your gifts and your strengths and weaknesses are different to the next person. And ultimately, uh, when we use this framework and we have a way of understanding ourselves at such a profoundly deep and scientific level, um, at the end of the day, you know, we can we can go about living our lives in the best way possible. And this is one of the biggest lessons that I've personally had to learn. And that is, you know, knowing the difference between um, when I'm overvaluing, overgoing um, out of my way to actually support and help and be there for others in my life, um, when it's coming at the expense of actually what I need to do for myself. So a lot of us can get caught up in, um, you know, seeing what other people's needs are, um, what emotional needs are being unmet and going about the business of, you know, trying to meet other people's needs and trying to be there for others. And then we get to a point of complete burnout because we forgot to actually check in with ourselves and look after ourselves. Now, this is not everybody. There's um, so many of us out there um, are actually wired to be more in attunement with um, what's going on for us internally before we're actually connected to the outside world. But I'm directly talking to those of you who are wired just like me. And the reason why I mentioned women in particular is because the cognitive function that I'm going to be talking more into in today's session or today's Facebook Live, is um, is actually um, a strength for 75% of women, okay? So majority of women are using this cognitive function or mental process, and we've all got eight, eight of them, right? But there's eight different cognitive functions that all of us human beings use, and one of them is one that 75% of the population of women are using as a strength, okay? So men do use this process process as well. And there are um, an amount of men who use this process as um, a strength in their personality as well. Ultimately, the technical term for it is extroverted feeling. It's about being very in much in attunement with the emotional, um, the emotional experience of everybody around you. And what happens is, and the growth journey for the people using this cognitive function is to 
actually get to the point when you can identify and incorporate what your emotional experience and your emotional needs are in the serving of getting everybody's needs met, right? And um, and so that's pretty much part of what I wanted to talk about because just recently, I have had a lot going on in my life. Like I think we're always in a transition of some sort. There's always something we're trying to break through and accomplish. Um, But there's been, you know, some pretty major decisions that I've had to make in my life recently, which have been putting my, um, you know, my uh, my direction, my purpose um, over and above everything else in my life, including my relationships. Um, And not because I value um, that more than the people that I love in my life, my life, but purely because it's a muscle that I must build in order to be my best self so that I can bring my best self to relationships. And um, the people in my life um, who are really, really close to me absolutely know that I'm in um, a stage in my life where my mission and everything that I'm trying to create and serve and create meaning in my life is going to actually come before um, those connections for a period of time until I've built the muscle, right? Built the muscle to incorporate my own needs into the mix of meeting everybody else. And um, and just recently, a couple of days ago, um, you know, uh, somebody close to me had an emotional experience, which was very much connected to me, right? And when we're in it, it becomes even more, you know, um, uh, you know, it's we're more triggered by it, right? When it's personal towards us, and I have found myself saying to this friend. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I actually can't take on board your emotional experience right now. I just, I, and it was so out of the ordinary for me. I mean, the work that I do and the person that I am, I'm always, if somebody's got a need, like I'm there, I'm ready to like, you know, come and come and support and, and, and encourage and all that sort of stuff. But I've actually had to take this new leap in my own personal growth, which is to say no, you know, to say no, to say, you know what? you're an adult and yes, I love you. I care for you. I want to be there for you. But right now I'm not at a capacity to take on board your emotional experience. And it's challenging, right? Particularly if you've built your life and, and a lot of your self-worth and, and, you know, feeling good about yourself because you're there for the people in your life all the time. It's really challenging to say, you know what, I'm sorry. No, I can't. I I have to work my own stuff out and I trust and believe in you to be able to do your own work as well, you know, and not be reliant on me when I'm running on empty in terms of the emotions that I can take on from you. And it's been a really interesting um, journey. It's been a very, very new journey. Um, But I'm telling you now, it has been super empowering. Now, I got a lot of muscles to build in this realm. Um, And I know most women, most of us women and and men, don't want to discount that, but like most of us who use this particular process, um, this particular cognitive function, which is a decision-making function, which is all about what what is the best decision to make that's going to have the, the best emotional impact on the people around me, including myself. All right. So that's what this process is actually all about. But when we're not healthy, when we're not looking after ourselves, we sacrifice our needs to serve others. And I'm telling you now, if you want extraordinary relationships, no matter what type of relationship that is, is if it's in your business, your family, your friendships, your intimate relationship, I don't care what the relationship is. If you're sacrificing what's healthy for you, if you're sacrificing what your needs are um, in order to meet the needs of others, I guarantee you, you are sabotaging the success of that relationship. You are going to end in a place of resentment towards that person and you're going to end up empty, you know, and it's not going to serve anybody. And anybody who actually cares about you and wants to be in an extraordinary quality of relationship with you, they don't want you sacrificing, right? I'm always saying that the best present and gift that you could ever give to anybody who loves you is an extraordinary quality of relationship with yourself, right? So if that means that you've got to take some time off from dealing with and serving everybody else's emotional experiences, and you've got to actually, you know, take some you time, you know, and 
don't think about it as being selfish because at the end of the day, if you're just meeting your needs um, vicariously through meeting other people's needs at the expense of what you need, then you are absolutely um, jeopardizing your connection and you're actually being highly selfish because you're relying on them to make you happy because you're not doing it for yourself. And the other issue here is that a lot of us don't slow down enough to actually work out what do I need in my life? Where am I going? What is it that I want to achieve? What do I want to do? And when we don't slow down and we don't take time to actually figure that out, we have no pathway to choose a different way. We have no reason to say no to other people when they're demanding of our needs um, because we haven't figured out what, what else we do with that time. So you've got to slow down, you've got to take time out, and you've got to de determine and decipher what is it that your needs are? And maybe it's just that you need some time to just not have to worry about anybody else, right? Um, you know, I spoke about this, um, I think last week or the week before about one of my beautiful clients when I challenged her to have an obligation free day. You know, I think we can all, um, you know, take that on board to just go, you know what, I need to actually turn off the whole external world. I need to go within myself. I need to do you know, some strategic thinking about where I'm going and what I want to experience. And I don't want anybody else's emotional experiences um, or needs kind of clouding, clouding or muddying the water of my clarity and my direction for what's most inspiring and fulfilling for me. And like I said, that is absolutely the opposite of being selfish. You know, when you don't look after yourself, when you don't know who you are, when you don't get the clarity and the direction that you actually need to be your best self, that's selfish because you'll end up ultimately putting all of the burden of your happiness and your fulfillment in external sources, those relationships around you, okay? And that is not healthy. That's where we get codependence, you know, going on. So if, it, if you're in a stage like me where you do need to retreat from those relationships and you do actually need to focus and double down on you and your own clarity and your own direction and your own needs and go about the business of becoming the best, most rounded out whole individual that you can be, tell people that, communicate openly about that. And you know, if you've been a rescuer in your life and you've been rescuing people all the time, you've probably ended up surrounding yourself with a bunch of, a lot of victims. It's just how it is, you know, that's how the dynamics of relationship operate. If you're not operating from a healthy place, if you're trying to rescue people all the time, who, what do you need as a rescuer? You need a victim who needs rescuing, right? So we create these dynamics in our life. So you have to take responsibility for the dynamics at play currently. And then you have to take responsibility for your future and what you want that to look like. And, you know, go about the business of becoming, transforming from the rescuer to the coach. You know, the coach is somebody who is not trying to rescue people and, you know, but it's actually transforming to the coach coach, which is, hey, you know what? I believe in you. I got your back, but you're doing this and I believe in you. You've got the capacity to do it. Let's go, you know, and then you're you're actually helping and supporting those people around you. You know, you're actually um, allowing that victim to transform into the creator of their own life rather than you just doing all the work for them as well. So there's so much at play here, um, but ultimately... It comes down to the fact that you just should not ever be afraid um, for, of not being there for others when you really need to be there for yourself. And then when you've been there for yourself and you've gotten yourself to a healthy position, that's the time when you can go, you know what, my cup's overflowing. You know, I'm here to support you. I'm here to be there for you. And now I can do that from an empowered place where I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm not trying to get recognition or validation for being this amazing person who's always there for you and, and has your back and saves you or whatever. I'm actually here because I wanna be here 
here. I've got the capacity be, to be here and I want to, you know, create an extraordinary quality of relationship with you. So it's a totally different mindset, might externally look like the same behavior, but it's coming from a totally different place and has a totally different impact and influence on the relationships that you have, including and first and foremost, your relationship with yourself. Okay. And if you struggle with this, you want to ask yourself why? How much of your self-worth is tied up in your ability to just be saving and rescuing others? You know, that's that's not healthy. There's a difference between, you know, being a great person and being there for the people that you love and care about and, you know, and doing those things to be there, but expecting them to make you happy in return and not feeling good enough if you're not saving somebody. And you're doing so at the expense of what you actually need, right? Don't distract yourself with other people's problems. Get about the business of facing your own, taking time out to focus on you, and don't get caught up in the trap of fearing not being there for others when you know that you need to be there for yourself. All right, I've been on a bit of a rant again, but I hope that this message um, has definitely served you. So let me know in the comments, drop me a comment, say hi. I'd love to know where you guys are tuning in from. Hope this message has definitely resonated and uh, let me check in with you guys. I love it. I've got uh, Grant, awesome, and Corey, and Tommy, and Judy, and Nick. Hello to you, my friend, and Tony, perfect hair. Oh, thank you, my friend. Just going out to the gym, chucked it up. So uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, Jared's here as well. And Alex and Savula, much love to you, Jared. Great to see you back again. And Adrian's back. I love it. And Renee's here and Carl and Ali. Um, Thanks, dear teacher. Your speech um, is very useful. I'm so grateful to hear that, my friend, and grateful to have you back. Um, So, so good. And um, Anne-Marie is here as well. And Sava and Daryl and uh, uh, Imran, um, thank you very much for for the info. You are so, so welcome, my friend. I'm really grateful to have you back as well. Grateful that you guys are getting value in these messages. I love it when I get to see you guys over and over and over again. So great um, feedback for me. Thank you. And Ning's here. Hello to you, my friend. And Adrian, you are not required to set yourself on fire and burn out to keep other people warm. Adrian, you are just like the master of quotes. That's three in a row now. Um, you are just acing this. I love it. Um, and thank you for sharing, Vanessa. You are so welcome, Adrian. I so appreciate you joining and sharing your words of wisdom. So well put. You are not required to set yourself on fire and burn out to keep other people warm. Oh my gosh, I love that. Drop the mic as usual. So guys, that really is my message for you. Um, Thank you so much for joining me live. If you have found this message of value, please do share it. And as always, I'm sending you guys all of my love, light, blessings, gratitude, energy, enthusiasm, everything extraordinary coming to you to wherever you are in the world today. I really do hope that it's beautiful, amazing, and extraordinary, that you're doing something super empowering and that today's message has definitely served you. Um, Bit of a late one um, in my books. I just had to like try and find where I've got some light because it's pitch black where I am. But I hope this message has definitely resonated, definitely added some value to you. And I thank you again for joining me live. Always appreciate getting to connect with you guys. And uh, I'm signing off. I'm sending you guys all of my love and I cannot wait to see you tomorrow.